Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata and Hadoop World in New York City. I'm at the Javits Center with Justin Erickson. Justin, how are you doing? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. Sure. So you've been at Cloudera for about three years now? Yes, coming up on three years this December. Okay, and you do product management yes. in, the, in which group? I'm in the SQL area, so I work on our Hive and Impala teams primarily. Okay. And so you've been to three most recent Strata Hadoop worlds. Yes. And what do you see as the difference? Well, size is kind of the more obvious one. That we're uh, every year I look and say I don't know we can double again, and every year we uh, we double and some. Um, and then it's also very exciting to see uh, the customers we were talking about too from previous years now talking about the results that they've been able to achieve with the technology. It's been very exciting to see that. So, we, so that in that sense, they've gone from the theory of what we're talking about here to actually putting it in practice and seeing results. Yes. And some of those use cases that you work with are from which kind of industries? I mean, across the, the whole gamut. So that's also been kind of exciting that you were so, kind of saw a lot of early tech adopters, which tend to be tech companies and finance and retail where they're sort of closer to the money before. Now we're seeing everything, uh, healthcare, manufacturing, basically any, any industry is uh, looking at it to some extent. And looking at it, they're looking at data as a solution to help their business or to help their efforts or whatever. Exactly, looking at how to be more data driven, capture more sources of data, be able to do the things that they were doing before uh, at more efficiency as data volumes are only increasing at faster and faster rates. So with Impala, uh, wh where would you like to see that go in the next, let's say, 12 months? Yeah, so we've seen uh, this past 12 months has been very exciting for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this year we've seen some big uptick uh, from going from people doing the, we launched back uh, April last year and seeing that growth go into production use cases. And we just recently launched Impala 2.0. The feature set we knew when we launched the initial Impala, we knew what we needed to go and build next. And so now I think we've unlocked a rich set of analytics with much more uh, analytical capabilities, analytical SQL capabilities. So I'd like to see the use cases we've been seeing, continue to see the uh, continue to see more of those, see more people go and uh, get experience that. And I think we'll start seeing more analytic uh, applications being able to take advantage of uh, the richer functionality that we had um, in, in much deeper ways. So SQL-based products would help companies that are shifting from an, an, a large enterprise that might have a lot of relational and SQL databases around and being able to use tools to get them into a more cloud-based, is that a fair? So, I, kinda, I mean, Hadoop historically started with uh, batch processing being a nice reservoir to store a lot of your data, prepare your data to put somewhere else. And you always are putting it somewhere else before you'd be able to do open it up to your business analysts, BI users. And so, where Impala fits in is enable the BI users and the analysts to be able to go and take advantage of the data in situ, which gives them access to a broader set of data, more fidelity of information, be able to discover new insights that were would, have been, uh, would not have been possible for them to do before. So it really is opening up a new class of users, well, no, not so much new now, but at the time we launched Impala, a new class of users, and continue to enable them to be able to move more use cases onto this shared, this shared and larger platform. And so once that new class of users is no longer new, what are they going to be doing? So, uh, I mean, a lot of it is extensions of similar use cases that are doing before. So when you look into what are the most common use cases that we see deployed over and again in, uh, against our technology with Impala, we see people building uh, operational uh, data stores and now doing the dashboards and BI directly from that. So there's example of a healthcare company I was just talking about earlier today that takes uh, over 2,000 uh, purchasing systems from their client hospitals, brings it together into this large Hadoop cluster, and now they can serve back an application of visuals back to those hospitals so they can get an idea of what does their spend look like. And so, um, so use cases like that, now with richer analytics and some of the additional capabilities, you can actually show uh, deeper analytical capabilities and, and take advantage of richer SQL functionality, show you more powerful reports and more powerful BI on top of that. Likewise, we see the other big use case we see a ton of is data discovery. So the ability to go and have new data sets and go and figure out what's the shape of this data, what does it look like, what are the different, and be able to find patterns with them then and figure out what might be interesting areas for me to explore from a business perspective um, uh, in what, what, I, what I can do differently from uh, to shape my business. And the so power you get here, oh, sorry, go ahead. In a way, data finds data? Data finds data, yeah. So you just, you start out, you get moving with it, and you see 
the richness that you can go and do, and then you combine more data sets into the system, you'll be able to, you're able to go and, uh, and look more in depth on data sets that used to be summarized and aggregated away, or in some cases were actually never actually collected because it was just too expensive to collect it at that point. So now, is that done by a data scientist or is that done by a BI guy? Or, I mean, can they do the same thing, like data finds data, if they don't know? So, uh, that's one of the interesting things about Hadoop. A lot of people talk around the flexibility and what you can do as a data scientist and you can sort of munge and go against raw data. I think the power of Hadoop is you actually get the flexibility of being able to empower that full spectrum. So our big target with what we've been trying to do with SQL and Hadoop and Impala uh, especially is open it up to those BI users and those SQL analysts that are coming in through tools that are familiar with tools like business objects or MicroStrategy or Tableau and not familiar and don't want to get in the weeds of exactly how do they construct their SQL and how do they get into the weeds of what the data look like so they can go and do that as well. But now you also have the flexibility for the more advanced either BI users or data scientists to be able to go and access raw data sets. It's sort of taking self-service BI to the next level where before you could ask whatever questions you want of the existing data sets. Right, right. But everybody sort of ignored, well how did the data sets get there and how did they get structured? Now you have the ability to go beyond that to take self-service BI all the way down to the data if you so choose. Obviously not all users are going to be able to go and do that. And that's kind of the power that you get to enable that full spectrum to be to, to from the more novice BI guy to the more expert. Excellent. So let's fast forward 12 months from now. What do you think the biggest difference will be in the data world? What 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 will the industry do to move the data world forward? So I think uh, a lot of that is already happening. Um, so I look at. Uh, the maturity of the platform and the extent of these use cases now spreading. We're already starting to see that as people are doing, building their initial sets of use cases and seeing some of those great successes around enabling BI guys in addition to the, uh, the back office processing that's been going on for years in Hadoop. Uh, they now see that, hey, I can bet strategically on this and be able to think as the silos break down between different data sets, how do I combine them together in richer ways? Um, take advantage of new forms of data and, conti and uh, ever continue to go and do that, that as you start seeing successes, you're willing to go and push the boundaries. You'll learn about how I can turn data into, into value, into real value. So I think we'll see a lot of that continuation. I also think that some of the things that we've done in the past um, are going to be started to uh, be rethought, like how you deal with data management and how I deal with lineage as I'm, uh, and modeling when I now have this full flexibility. Um, to be able to go and access from some of those more raw data sets. You don't want to just reinvent the previous way of going and doing things. So I think that there's an interesting challenge that we as an industry are going through of how to enable you a lot of the same capabilities without detracting from the flexibility. And some things uh, uh, get applied in a very similar way and some things like data management and, and things like lineage and uh, data modeling I think is an area that we will see a lot of uh, progress over the next year. One last clarification. You said the platform matures. Is there the platform? Is there one platform, or are we talking about Hadoop? Or is there are there multiple platforms, multiple stacks, or so uh, the data platform, or uh, uh, the ecosystem of projects around Hadoop, okay. including obviously Hadoop itself. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of these that um, uh, obviously we ship a platform of Hadoop with uh, Cloudera's distribution of Hadoop, right. and there are other vendors that have uh, packaged some of the same sets of technologies that, that we work on and ship as well. Okay. Um, so it's, That's I'm the, just meaning the, the whole the industry. Yeah, yeah. The There's a platform for data. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great, so Justin, we look forward to seeing you next year. Sounds and, good. Uh, and Santa Clara and maybe Barcelona if you're there as well. Sounds wonderful. Thank All you right, for having thank me. You. Thank you.